The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the September 1st, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make this one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. I'm here to serve you during this next 53 minutes. So give us a call at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't call in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Send that to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And inside here, Tigers Den will any in every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show right now. We got a sea of red out there. You got the Dow up 155 points, about a half a percent. About 1% for the S&P or 37 points. NASDAQ 1 and 6 tenths percent or 196 points. Russell's down 38, 2%. Semis off 4%, 110. It's a bloodbath out there. In fact, if we go take a look at the indices, let's start by taking a look at the indices, the cash indices, that is. Then we'll go take a look at future contracts and so forth, see where we're at intraday. But if we take a look at the daily time frame charts out here, these are the, if you see the Dow, today is going to form the bar following bar number 9 of 889 cone. That says that there should be a bottom that leads to a counter trend rally that should take the uh, Dow up to the 32,625 ish area. That is its green oscillator and change line. The S&P 500 has the same pattern. Today is the bar following bar number nine. That suggests if in fact we get a bottom out here, the price should move up to 4,103. Now, as price moves higher, should it move higher, that number is going to change. The oscillator and change line number will change. So I'm giving you where the target is as of today. Here's the fly in the financial ointment, and it's coming from the NDX100, which yesterday completed the TD9 count. In other words, yesterday was the bar following bar number nine. It was the low of the day before that is the low of the pattern. And that says that price needs to close above. Let's see what that number is. Uh, right here for the uh, cash indice. That level is 12, 240, now, if price is able to close above that at day's end, the pattern will retain itself. Otherwise, there's an A to B equal CD to the downside. The next bottom signal would appear would come if there was a bullish reversal candle. The Russell 2000 does not have a bottoming pattern. It does have the A to B equal CD. It's past the one-to-one -one price projection. It is pulling back into its breakout level support of 1814.10. It needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom. The semis look a little bit like the Russell 2000. Today is going to become bar number five for it. It has an A to B equal CD to the downside pattern, and therefore needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom. We have a confirmed right now. Well, if today was the, if, if 1110 was the session close, then the Dow transports are giving you a buy the D point pattern. Because what we have in place right now is really a combination of two candles. You've got a bullish hammer candle, but there was a gap to the downside. So which one is it? You know what? At this stage here, let's come back to it after we see how the day's candle completes. And the NASDAQ composite, like the NDX 100, also forming a TD9 count bottom, completing that pattern yesterday. But price is trading below the low of that pattern, so it is threatening to negate it. And that low is at 11.790.02. That's the price level that the NASDAQ composite must close back above at day's end to retain that pattern. If it doesn't, 
Then it's the A to B equals CD pattern. It would appear that's controlling things out there, and that would require a bullish reversal candle. New York Stock Exchange just has the A to B equals CD pattern, no TD9 count. It's also in bar number five, like the Russell, like the semis out there. So it, too, needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom. Now, speaking about the uh, NASDAQ, or the New York Stock Exchange, let's go switch over to the advanced decline oscillator out here. So we'll change screens. You'll see the black background screen here momentarily. And what you're going to see as soon as it did populated is that it is in the extreme, extreme, extreme. Did I say extreme? I think I said it three times. Let's say it a fourth time. It is in the extreme oversold condition. We're down at minus 355. The low that we had back in uh, for this indicator back on March 12th, 2020, that was the low of the, uh, it's the lowest low that we've seen uh, since uh, uh, going, going back to the prior low that was in this area. That got down to minus 392.28. Now that formed a bottom with a uh, divergent pattern where price was moving lower, but the advanced client oscillator was moving higher out there. Um, so we're in the extreme oversold condition. Of course, New York Stock Exchange does not have a bottoming pattern out here. But uh, we certainly should be, the market should be getting close to a uh, at least some type of counter trend move out there. So the end of the day, it's the NDX 100, the NASDAQ composite. You, you could almost say the semis are, are a problem, trouble, child as well. But the NASDAQ composite and the uh, NDX 100, if they do close blows those, those TD9 counts, I'm not giving much hope then to the TD9 count patterns for the Dow, the S&P, and the uh, – which other one is out there? I guess those are the only two that are out there. So that's what's going on with regard to the cash indices. Let's switch over now and go take a look at what's going on inside of uh, the equity futures. Here we've got the intraday time period. So let's start with uh, where do we want to start? Well, let's update the uh, chart out here. Let me hit the refresh button. On a 10-minute basis, I'm going to go from smallest to largest. So on a 10-minute basis, you have a TD9 count pattern that has taken hold. Price should target 12.114. That's the oscillator and change line. So thereabouts, that number is going to change up and down. If price can overtake the oscillator and change line, then what we should see is a move up to the 12184, 12202 area. 12202 is where any counter trend move should end for a 10 minute time frame. You don't see the chart? Man, I don't know what's going on there, guys. Oh, you know what I did? So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bill. That was a two by four upside the head. I thought I had changed it. I must have hit the wrong screen button. There we go. So now you should see it. Thank you. Love to have wing men and wing women uh, in here. Um, cash industry white screen slightly cropped. Hmm, sorry about that. Uh, hopefully these screens are not uh, are not uh, uh, chopped off here. So you're in the lower right hand corner. TD nine count bottom. Fifteen minute time frame. No bottom signal. Maybe there's an A to B equals CD, mm, but uh, we'll we say yeah, and maybe not so much. Oh, I do see. No, I don't see anything. On the 30-minute uh, time frame, boy, this is going to need a uh, heck of a move. It's going to need to move above 12.119 to confirm a road momentum indicator bottom signal. But we do have wave number seven. Um, and if in the next half hour, that means the 11.30 to 12 o'clock session that has a higher low, that would confirm a seventh wave move. Now, the real resistance out here, as you can see, is up at the 12.225 area. I don't know whether price will get up there, but you at least want to note that if there is any kind of rally, uh, because that has been a resistance level. The 60-minute time frame chart needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a bottom. Uh, you have a TD9 count pattern that's in place on the 120-minute chart. That gets negated if there's a close below 12, 113.50, and that would be at 12 noon as the show is coming to an end. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the mount todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is australia's largest undeveloped gold project we are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district this is a large-scale low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, 
Ready Development Stage Gold Project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back up, folks. So we got a couple of questions. Uh, the first one, uh, really kind of a statement, kind of a question from Jambalaya inside the Tiger's Den and basically making a statement. Uh, Stevie, no, no window dressing this month out here. Well, we really need to let the day play out. Um, and, you know, that uh, th that fun bind can certainly come in tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday of uh, next week out there. So uh, so I think it's too early to to make that call. But certainly things do not look good at 11.18 in the morning, which I really think is the point that you were trying to make out there. And I'm in, I'm in agreement with that. And, you know, this is the ominous chart here, the NQ, which is negating that uh, TD9 count uh, pattern out there. But let's see how the uh, day uh, plays out. So the uh, first question is really about the 30-year uh, Treasury, and this is for CKP inside the Tiger's Den. So first I'll give you the view. The, uh, you may have seen that view, the multi time frame set of charts out there. So we'll get those populated here momentarily. And... Uh, as we take a look at these charts, what is, is kind of hard to make out, but on a monthly time frame, uh, there is a confirmed by the D point. So the A to B, uh, the A to B lasted to this uh, bar number eight of a TD9 count. Price bounced right up in the oscillator and change line that made its next move to the downside, created a nice monthly hammer candle in June of 2022. So that's a real key area out there. But you have a confirmed by the D point on a monthly basis. You've got that on a weekly basis. You would have that too, but you also have a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. So right now, price is just consolidating with inside its weekly profile. So support could be or should be at 133.05 CKP, 133.05. If price closes below that, well, then it tells us that it's going to go target those Rhodes Mintum indicator lows, the buy the D point low on the monthly chart out there. The daily time frame, I don't have any kind of a bottom signal. So I'd say it's really the weekly right now that's kind of controlling matters out here. And let's see if, in fact, price does find uh, support at the 133.05 level. 30-minute time frame chart says that if the 30-year treasury, that looks like the 30-year treasury is attempting to form a uh, TD9 count. Now, what price should do is move up to its oscillator and change line. If it can overtake that, then we're looking for a run into the 134, 135-ish range out there. Looking at the other intraday charts, I don't see anything that sticks out to me yet. 
as a uh, bottom signal. I do see wave number seven patterns out here, but I don't see anything right now that is showing us any kind of a bottom. So I would say that price is going to go target that 133.05 level. So I hope that that's what uh, – I'll just throw this other chart up on the screen. You'll be able to see this, maybe give you a bigger view. Uh, where is this? Uh, change windows. Get these uh, other charts up on our screen here momentarily. So here I, I've got in the weekly chart, I've got the A to B equals CD pattern. It's, you've got it on the uh, monthly chart as well. So you can see those patterns that are in play. And here you can see the profiles perhaps more clearly. Now, the question would be what happens if uh, the profile levels don't hold the support? Again, then it's the uh, back to that hammer candle. Uh, that we took a look at or the the bottom that took place uh, so the next level of support beyond that would be 131.01 we get below that we're headed uh lower out there now you can see on a uh no I, there's really nothing else for me to share out there other than just blabber and i'm not interested in blabbering so i hope that helps you out ckp thanks so much for the uh, request let's go to our next request out here this one coming in from lb lb wants to take hope all is well in sunny florida it is uh, and uh, let me get the uh, charts up here because I know what LB wants to look at, and that is your friend, Uranium. Well, not really your friend, but let's go take a look at Uranium. It says, uh, would you please take a look at URA and give me your take on what is going on here this morning. Was this just a retest of the breakout area, or do you see the run being over now? Volume is fairly high. Also, give me current support and resistance levels. Thanks so much. So let's go turn over to our other charts out there, our white background charts. We'll see the daily, weekly, and monthly time frame charts for uranium, or URA, the ticker symbol, the ETF for this. So what is price doing today? So far, it is just pulling back and testing a key level of support, and that is its green oscillator and change line. The green oscillator and change line is currently printing at 2224. Price is at 22.29. Now, if price closes below the green oscillator and change line, it tells us that the momentum has faded and that we have a price oscillator that will be turning down above zero. So then the question is where is the next area of support? That would be at 21.88. What if price closed below 21.88? That would then be 20.98. Both of those were profile levels, center and then the daily profile. So, so far, Price is pulling back and testing support. Now, in order for it to get into clear, and it does not have to happen to daily, you want to see price get back above the top of that daily profile, and that's at 22.79. So that right now is your resistance level. So you've got support, you've got resistance, you've got the oscillator and change line. The weekly time frame chart still shows an A to B equals CD to the upside. The question is, could this week form a sell the D point or a Gartley sell pattern? So here's the A to B. We'll draw that in here. So here's A to B. That goes to bar number three of the TD Nikon. Now we're just going to move that over to the low of the uh, the retracement out there. And actually it does. So here's what you're going to watch, watch for. Now, we can't make that call today, Lee, because we still need tomorrow's activity. But if it does form a shooting star candle, which is what is in place right now, then on the weekly base you're going to have a sell the D point. Now, when you get a confirmed sell the D point or confirmed top on any time frame, Typically, what we look for is price to pull back to that oscillator and change line. That's currently a 2083. Of course, you know that first price needs to get below its green oscillator and change line on the daily time frame to even suggest that that is likely the outcome. But it is something to pay attention to. So the answer to your question, would you please take a look at the URA? Give me your take on what is going on here this morning. Right now, it is just a test of a key level of support. I think you need to watch that area now. Real quickly, we'll take a look at the 30-minute time frame, see what kind of signals this might have for us. This is telling us. So this actually has a Gartley buy pattern, I'm pretty sure. Here's the A to B equals CD. We'll just simply draw this in here. I guess at some point in time I should have a programmer type in or finish the A to B equals CD for this pattern. So there's your A to B equals CD. You've got that little bullish hammer candle. So. Price should uh, bounce from here, take us up to 22.98, 23.04. But if price does close below 22.11, that tells you that the run is going to get back to its breakout level of 21.65 out there. So that's what's going on with regard to the 30-minute, the daily, weekly, and monthly for ticker symbol URA. Lee, thanks so much for writing in, and have a, a terrific uh, Thursday. Next question, and only other question that I have in place here. I see there's another question maybe inside the Tiger's Den, is uh, from Hector and Patty. And their question goes like this. Hey, Steve, oh, happy Thursday turnaround Thursday. There you go. You have it, folks. Hector and Patty have called a turnaround out here. Uh, so they'll be the ones responsible uh, if it doesn't happen. 
Now, he goes on to say the uh, the CD down leg on the IWM IW looks looks much better. I, it's not to the left, thanks. So let's first change screens here. Give me a moment, and then we'll go put up the IWM. We'll follow along with what Hector is uh, looking at out here. So let's go back to, just give me a moment if you would be kind enough to do that. Let's go back to this set of charts. Let's put in the IWM. Let's look at the daily time frame. We'll, comp we'll finish looking. Here's the A to B equals CD pattern. And uh, so what he's referring to here is if you take a look. And so one of the keys to the A to B equals CD pattern, this is really important out here, is to maintain the exact same angle of A to B as you have for C to D. Now, this tool that I have automatically does that. And he's saying, hey, it's it's not on the strong side, which would be the left side of that C to D leg, but it's right on it. It's still a pretty strong A to B equals CD, but not nearly as strong as perhaps something else that Hector is looking at. We'll finish reading the question when we get back from this break. Steve Rhodes with TFNN, and I would love to hear from you. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we've got the charts for the IWM up on the screen here. This is for Patty and Hector out here. And uh, so, uh, again, uh, in, in now that I read the full question, uh, yes, what uh, what Hector was trying to say is the uh, the C to D leg here looks uh, stronger than the uh, Nasdaq 100 or the uh, S and P 500 out there. Maybe it was a Dow. Um, yeah, it was a Dow in the A and Q out there. But let's just stay focused here on the Russell 2000 for Hector and Patty because he also writes the IWM forms a bullish reversal bottom by day's end that he's going to go ahead and load up on the IWM. So let's first first you have a gap to the downside. So is today going to form some type of bullish reversal candle? I don't know. 
Um, you know, but we, certainly we don't have anything that looks like that as we speak right now. In A to B equals C, the folklore language out here, what price has done, it's attained the 1.272 expansion. The next downside price target range would be, we'll get us down to 176.07. That's the 1.618 A to B equals CD to the downside. If we look at the weekly chart out here, we can see that price is back inside its weekly profile. Now, it's hard to see the top, happens to be because it just formed this week, is at 180.83. So this would have potential support or buyers at 177.31. Now, I would say, Hector and Patty, if price closes below 177.31, odds favor that price will make its way back to the June lows and price will make its way back into the 170.26, the bottom of that daily profile. If there's going to be any support above that level, it would be at the 175.65 level. That's from the monthly time frame. But from a daily standpoint, because you've got that A to B equals CD pattern to the downside, you are really looking for some type of bullish reversal candle before you would step into that. Now, if we go take a look at the intraday charts for the Russell 2000 equity future contract out here. Actually, let's do this. Before I do that, let's just go put up the uh, Dow. And I'll do the Dow through the diamonds out here. And let's just put in the A to B equals CD pattern. And here on the A to B equals CD pattern, what you can see, what Hector was referring to, is that price is on the left-hand side of that C to D leg. That tells you that the price is a stronger move to the downside, C to D, than it was from the A to B leg out there. Now, when it's a stronger move to the downside, it's also telling you that price is going to do, likely going to do, more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD pattern. Of course, the way that you explode off of a C point is also providing you with information. In this case, here was a big wide ranging bar to the downside. And then a third piece of a third factor is the retracement of that uh, B to C leg, which was a 0.382 retracement. So a very shallow retracement out there. Again, all those things lead to or have led to and typically lead to. So those of you that use the A to B equals CD pattern, you're getting some nice tidbits out here to use to um, to add to your toolbox uh, that uh, uh, price along that left-hand side, strong side, uh, is beyond the 1 to 1 1.272 and uh, should go target. Now, this is the diamonds. The diamonds right now look like they've got a bullish hammer candle, right? But it is a gap to the downside. So, you know, uh, it, it makes it very suspect. That's why if you go back to the equity future contract for the Dow, you won't have that uh, gap. You typically won't have that gap out there. And this is going to be a little bit easier to make the call. Now, because you're interested in the Russell 2000, and because I don't have any, uh, zooming on a short-term chart, I'm sensing it's more bottoming set up here. So um, let's go move over and take a look at the Russell 2000 charts out here for Hector and Patty. And as uh, Dan was pointing out, if we're going to see some kind of a bottom, we will typically see it on the intraday charts first. Now, what we really need to see here, because everybody knows, every rally has been sold. So we need to start seeing, even on intraday, intraday basis, 5-minute, 10-minute, 15-minute, 20-minute, we need to start seeing higher lows and higher highs out there. And we at least need to see that. But let's get back to the Russell 2000 multi-time frame charts out here. On a 10-minute chart, you've got a TD9 count bottom. It's trading with inside its profile. If price can close above 18.05, it suggests to run 18.15. Above 18.15, you're looking for a move to 18.30, 18.29.80. On a 15-minute base, you've got a TD9 count bottom. Price needs to clear 18.09.20. If price can do that, you're looking to move to 18.14 or 18.23. We have a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom on the 30-minute time frame. This suggests that price should go target 18.12.70. That's the Oscillator and Change Line. Hector and Patty. If price can get above that level, you're then looking for a run to 18.26 to 18.27. 18.27 is the center of its bullish structure profile. If it's just a counter trend move on a 30-minute time frame, that's where the sellers will start jumping on board. If you take a look at a 60-minute time frame chart out here, it has the potential. We don't know because we have 26 minutes left in this session, but you've got a bullish piercing candle at the moment. That could be confirming a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. The 120-minute chart. This pattern, or this pattern, this candle, I should say, is going to complete at 12 noon. There's a possibility that it could set up a bullish hammer candle. If it does, you would then have a confirmed Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom for the 120-minute chart. On the two-hour, I'm sorry, the four-hour chart, you have bar number eight that is complete. Now, bar number eight will not complete until uh, 2 p.m. That says you wouldn't get a confirmed TD9 count bottom for the four-hour time frame until the session end out there. And then lastly, we've got the five-hour time frame. Oh, I can't say lastly, but we have the five-hour time frame chart. As we span this out, you've got an A to B equals CD to the downside. We can clearly see that. You've got wave number seven that is in place out here. So you need a higher low to confirm that pattern. And you need to close above its oscillator and change line to suggest that there's some type of 
counter trend rally, some some larger counter trend rally that is in place out there. And that level is 1832.40. It'll be a bit higher than that. So call it 1835. That price would need to close above on a daily time frame. And it can be a bottom, which is simply price pulling back the support. And it is at support, 1806.80 out there. So Hector and Patty, absolutely there's potential here. We know that the markets are extremely oversold. There should be some type of relief rally. The question, though, is it starting as we speak right now? And how will we know if there's any type of concerted counter trend rally out here? Well, we'll start to see on the intraday time period. Let me just switch screens now. Let's go back to uh, this. And give me a moment. Let's go to the intraday set of uh, an intraday chart out here. So see, we've got all these nice... Uh, lower highs, lower lows. We need to see that change. We saw a bit of a counter trend move out here. Looked like we were going to get that nice bottom. That took place at about, start began at about 1.30 in the afternoon on August 23rd. But then, uh, you know, the uh, sky fell out of it. But at least you want to be able to see that out there. So Hector and Patty, I know I spent a lot of time on that, but there really weren't really a whole lot of questions otherwise. And, and actually, there were some good learning uh, things that you brought to the attention of everybody out there with regard to the A to B equals CD pattern. So thank you very much for doing that. And uh, you have a uh, you have a uh, have a wet Thursday. Nobody likes a thirsty Thursday out there. Well, that is until you get to the bar. Hey, how about that uh, Serena Williams match last night? I don't know if you watched uh, last night or the uh, match on uh, Monday out there. I thought personally, I thought she played much better last night, way stronger, and against a uh, better opponent too. Um, out there who really looked like uh, really you know that first set that first set what was the difference Dan maybe two points two points it could have gone the other way um, and, and how about that one call that hit the line by like a uh, like a pencil tip out there I mean uh, now it is pretty cool technology that they have there right they've got no people calling the lines nobody calling the net out there it's all automated and electronic out there so actually I thought it was uh, pretty cool oh that was a, it was a great great uh, Really a great match out there. Uh, I'm enjoying it. Uh, now, she's going to be on tonight, I think, again at 7. I don't know what time they actually go live. Uh, I think maybe about 7.15, 7.20 uh, with her sister in a doubles match. I can't remember ever seeing a, a doubles match uh, televised like this at prime time in the evening. And on, on center court, no less out there. But uh, uh, it's going to be pretty cool. It has been. It was really fun to watch her play. So, uh, so she, she beat the number two player in the world. Does that now make her number one? Yeah, probably not. But uh, it's a lot of fun to uh, watch the uh, the U.S. Open, and uh, it is a great. If you've never been to the U.S. Open, put it on your list of things to do. It's a blast. Steve Rhodes with TFN, and yet the Dow down 88, S&P up 33, Nasdaq 100 down 206. We'll be right back, and we'll uh, field some additional questions. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's go to uh, one of our questions out here. This is from McGuppy inside the Tigers Den. Let's take a look at NVIDIA. And the question is, can we please cover NVIDIA? Bad news this morning. It's creating a huge A to B equals CD down. Any support levels that will stop it from dropping to uh, the projected uh, D point? Well, so interesting question. First, the answer to your question is yes. That level of support is 134.59. We're trading at 133.84. That level of support I just referred to is the monthly TD9 count breakout level. I also see on a weekly time frame chart. Let me make sure I got the right charts up. Yeah. Oh, I don't. Sorry. Sorry. Let me switch over to the white background charts. I was. I saw Mr. Bill was getting ready to hit me upside the head with that two by four. That's why I stopped there briefly, just to avoid that pain. Uh, so now, as we take a look at the uh, Nvidia charts, you can see on the very right hand side. You got 134.59 is the monthly TD9 count breakout level. So that is an area of support. You got wave number seven on a weekly time frame. So of course that cannot confirm a wave seven bottom, just a one of one of the tools of the Chapman wave until next week, and that needs a lower, it needs a higher low out there. The daily time frame. I think what uh, if we pull this chart back, I believe what. Uh, what McGuppy might be looking at is this large A to B equals CD because the B point has been taken out or appears to be taken out. And that's low from July the 5th out there. So I get that as being the potential large A to B equals CD. But I would say, well, hold on a minute here because I would do this. I would come back and take a look at the larger A to B equals CD, which is really the weekly chart out here. Or we could put it on the – well, I can't really put it on the monthly. I guess I could, but we've got it on the weekly chart. So that's this. So here on a weekly time frame, first from a weekly perspective, the swing point is July the 4th. That began that week. 214 million shares. You're at 233, 223. So we know that we are already exceeding the volume of that as we take out the swing point. I would say as opposed to drawing the A to B equals CD pattern that I'm assuming you are, which is just simply going from the high to the low on the daily time frame. So that high, by the way, that would be November 22nd. And then I think you're using as a swing point this low out here from July 5th and then using the retracement up there, which was a consolidation pattern. Uh, if you're using that, that tells you the price gets down to oh, minus 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 thirteen dollars out there. So that's certainly not the uh, A to B equals CD pattern is in play. And maybe that's not what you were looking at out here. But what I would give you is the next price projection level. And that is if 134.59 fails to hold and contain price, then we're likely looking at about the 114. 45 level as its price projection area. So McGuppy, I hope that that was helpful to you uh, with regard to NVIDIA. And if not, uh, please let me know what I uh, what I missed or what additional information you might uh, need out there. Peter wants to take a look at the euro out here. So let's go take a look at the uh, euro, see what it's doing. We've got uh, multiple sets of charts 
take a look at here. The upper chart, upper left-hand side, is the uh, monthly time frame, which negated a uh, TD nine count bottom a while back. It's trading below support level. Suggest it wants lower price, and I'd say lower price down into the eighty-ish area out there. If we take a look at the uh, euro out here on a uh, weekly time frame, uh, no bottom signal here. The daily time frame has a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern. And uh, but it will get negated if price closes below the uh, low from August the uh, 23rd out there. Uh, the 30 minute time frame chart. Um, give me a second here. It, it's possible that it looks like so it does have a TD nine count bottom that is in place as we speak right now. So what the euro should do is uh, bounce up into its uh, oscillator and change line on the 30 minute time frame. No bottom signals yet on the 60-minute, none on the 120, none on the 240, none on the five-hour time frame chart out there. So, Peter, in Park City, no charts again? What? Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, my apology, folks. I, um, yeah, it's a, there's, if, if, there's one, if there's one issue that I have with, uh, with uh, this Discord is that I don't clearly see where, where I'm at out there. But in any event, uh, here are the charts. So my apology. So to summarize it, the daily time frame, I think, is really what you're focused on out here. And that is uh, because it's got that confirmed Roachman to indicator bottom. But if it takes out the lows from August 23rd, um, that says lower price. Longer term, everything says lower price out here. The 30-minute chart says, hey, I might have a counter trend rally up to its oscillator and change line. So I hope that helps you out, Peter, with regard to the uh, euro. Uh, the next question, let me see here, coming in from uh, Alton. Alton says, uh, good morning, Steve. You have time. Could you take a look at uh, which of these two looks? So I've, I've got enough time for at least one for sure, and that's going to be Intel. So let's switch over, uh, take a look at the three time frame chart out here for Intel. Um, and if by some miracle, Alton, we have time to go take a look at AMD, we'll do that. So oh, let's put up uh, INTC, see what it is doing out here. Take just a moment for this to uh, get populated. Intel is uh, trading out at uh, 3141. It's below daily, weekly, and monthly profiles. I know you're not you're not seeing that on your screen here. You will momentarily. I went ahead and switched over to the other screen just so I could see what's going on. Oh, I typed and I was uh, dyslexic as well. I N T C. That is the better. You know, if you're if you're trying to pull up. If you're trying to pull up Intel, it always helps on a chart to put in the correct ticker symbol. That is a rule number 101. Stevie did not follow that rule. My apologies there. So uh, come on, populate here. There we go. So now we take a look at Intel. Okay, well, maybe there's some good news here, potential good news. Intel is going to complete a TD9 count bottom today. That says, now I don't know if the current low is going to be the low of the day, but that's let's assume that it is, 31.13. If price closes below that, well, that Intel is telling us it wants lower price. Now, lower price to where? You know, that's a great question. So, lower price to where? Man, Intel 2248 is a, a possibility out here. Um, here's the real pattern. Here's the longer-term pattern on Intel. This uh, is a consolidation pattern. So, let's go ahead and uh, put that in here. I just need to get my rectangular tool. So... It may, may be a little sloppy, but but look at that. That is definitely a consolidation. So we just need to move that consolidation box down to the bottom of the consolidation. Yeah, how about that? Intel is telling us you get back to the $17-ish uh, area out there. That's the bigger picture. The shorter-term picture out here, which Alton was really interested in, is watch today's uh, – we'll really watch tomorrow's price action. Do you have a confirmed TD9 count bottom? What that means, Alton, is Intel should at least have a counter trend move up to 3270. If price can take out 3270, then its run should take it to 3390 or 3479 out there. So that's what we're looking at. We're taking a look at Intel. Thanks so much for the request. Tim has a question and says, I'm short the S&P. Where's the ideal point to cover, and how high do you see a counter trend rally? So that's a great question. To answer that question, what I would do is go over to the ES mini charts. So we have the Russell up on our screen out here. This will take a moment to populate. So let's get those going, the ES922. Give these a moment to populate. And Tim, will give you that answer. We'll try to give you the best answer that we can, obviously. Of course, some of your question is going to be dependent upon which time frame it is that we look at. So on a TD9 count bottom, which the daily does have, your question was, 
how high can a counter trend rally run? The answer to that question is it's oscillator and change line. For me, that would be the price target. Now, in a daily time frame, that's currently printed at 4104. 4104. When we come back to this break, though, we're going to further answer Tim's question because then we'll have the intraday charts here. Steve Rhodes with TFNA. We'll be right back. Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, back up, folks. Let's go back to the uh, ES Mini uh, charts out here just to complete the question for, for Tim. So, um, you know, your your question specifically was, okay, first, how high could a counter trend rally go to? So we took a look at that on the daily time frame. The problem is on the intraday charts out here, if there's no levels of resistance that have failed, uh, what level of resistance would need to fail in order to suggest that uh, you know, there's a counter trend rally that would take us up in the 4104 level. The two numbers that I would look at are 3942. That is the current top of the 30-minute uh, profile, but really more like 4002 even Steven. That's a TD9 count breakdown level on a 60-minute time frame. So those would be the areas that I would be watching. 4017 on the two-hour time frame chart would be another area that a price could clear would tell you that there's uh, likely more rally uh, to come. 
But as of 11.55 in the uh, morning out here, we're just not getting a, a ton of signal. Well, the signals we are getting is that every rally is being sold. So until we get even at least on a 10-minute basis, some uh, some uh, higher lows and some higher highs out there, Tim, you know, I think you uh, I think you go ahead and you stick with that uh, position out there. So we do have a minute left. Uh, what do we want to do here? Uh, there was a question from Nancy inside the Tiger's Den with regard to Apple. Uh, Apple here, as you'll see on the daily time frame, is going to complete a TD9 count bottom. So you can use Apple as another uh, stock to uh, uh, help us with regard to what the market's intent is. And what I mean by that is whatever today's low is, current low inside of Apple, is at 155.30. Let's assume that that low holds. I don't know that it will. But if it does, if price closes below that low tomorrow, then this TD9 count pattern will get negated. It'll be back to the A to B equals CD pattern. Those require bullish reversal candles to confirm a, a bottom out there. If the TD9 count fails, uh, Apple likely get down to 152.16 out there. Apple is trading below its weekly profile out there, um, and so that's not really a good scene. But it's the daily right now that's controlling things. So, folks, thanks so much for being here on Terrific Thursday. I'm going to be recording tomorrow's show between 8 and 9 on Fantastic Friday. Please join me then. Have a terrific uh, day. If I don't see you tomorrow, have a uh, great holiday weekend, and we'll be back with you on Tuesday. Take care, folks.